Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books. Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me at infojamilamasaiva.com. I'll link down the information in the description box below as well. If you are a new viewer on my channel, here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning viewer I'm always delighted to see you back on my channel as you can see from everything that's in front of me in this video today we are going to be talking about cheese etiquette we're going to, to collect together the cheese board abiding by certain etiquette rules regarding cheese and then how to properly eat it so make sure to stay until the very end of this video so you can make the most of it and before we delve into the cheese etiquette, I would like to thank Casa Baku, which is the very unique and first culinary school here in Azerbaijan that is accredited by City and Guild London Institute. All the students of this school receive international recognized culinary diplomas. If you're interested in learning more about culinary arts, please make sure to check out the link down in the description box about Casa Baku. First things first, we're about to organize our own cheese board from a selection of cheese that I have in front of me. There are two important rules we have to abide by. Number one is we have to offer a variety of cheese and number two is that the number of the cheese should be odd, meaning it should be three, five or seven. Another rule that we have to remember when we are doing a cheese board is that the number of cheese or the variety of cheese should not exceed the number of guests. When placing the cheese, it's also important to understand that we cannot place the cheese too close to each other, especially the ones that have more pungent flavors, so the flavors do not mix and match on our board. So we'll leave a bit of a distance between the cheeses so they can maintain their flavor. When you are preparing a cheese board, you have to take out the cheeses that you're going to be serving at least 30 minutes to in advance. This especially applies to cheese that are freshly uh, eaten, so the cheese like a goat cheese, you would take it 30 minutes minutes in advance. Some other cheese like parmesan or blue cheese you can actually take it out an hour in advance. The reason you have to take it out a lot earlier than just straight from the fridge to the cheese board is because when the cheese is at room temperature its flavors are more uh, tasteful so you're able to actually taste the flavors a lot better at a room temperature rather than when the cheese is served cold. The partition of the cheese, the way you cut it, is also very important. You have to understand that the structure of the cheese is in a way that the factors that influence the formation of the cheese, like the territory, uh, the ingredients that go into the yeast, the bacteria that make that cheese, they affect the way that the cheese is composed. So usually the strongest or the best, the most indulgent tastes are in the middle of the cheese versus the, the, ed the edge part that's closer to the rim, it has a little bit less of that richer taste. So when you're cutting the cheese, you have to ensure that every slice, so every person gets the slice and gets to taste the uh, entire beauty of the cheese, so to speak, from the middle part that's richer to the one that is closer to the rim. Here I have some cheese that was already pre-sliced for me in order to be placed on a cheese board. But if you were to slice the cheese, every cheese has its own shape and form that is best recommended to be sliced. And that is to ensure that everyone gets the slice and is able to taste everything from the middle part to the end part, the rind part. So the more common shape are the triangular wedge shape or doorstep shape like you see here in the cheese in front of me. Uh, there is some that's parmesan that is uh, sliced in a triangular shape and the camembert or the brie is usually the soft cheese that you should slice in the form of a little pie uh, to ensure that everyone gets the crust and the middle part equally. Before I show you the cheese eating etiquette, I want to show from a very close up the most popular cheese butter knife set. Here we have the four in front of you. These are the most common ones that you can buy. This one is called the prong knife. It has the blade, it has the empty circled part that allows you to cut very nice and gently the soft cheeses and it has the prongs here that are used to pick up the cheese and serve it to your own plate. So here I'll be using this knife to cut the soft cheese like brie. I'll cut it here in the middle like that, part it really nicely. Then I'll use the prong size to transfer it to this other plate like that. This is called the prong knife. You can also use this prong knife to serve the parmesan 
but also you can use the blade part to cut it into smaller pieces if you need to serve it with some toothpicks. This is called a chisel knife. It has a sharp blade. It's flat like that. It's also a very versatile knife. Again, you can use it to cut some soft cheese or um, like I've cut the brie before in the video. And you can also use it to shave Parmesan. So if you need to just shave a little bit of it, you can use this blade like that. Alternatively, you can use it to actually cut it into cube-like shapes like this. You can cut it into even smaller shapes like that. And you can also use this knife, for example, um, to cut the brie like that and to separate it into smaller pieces or really any other soft cheese as well. This last knife is called a heart knife. The reason it's called like that is because it has a very recognizable heart kind of shape. It has a very sharp blade and this is pretty much an all-purpose knife. You can use it to cut any kind of cheese, especially very good for hard cheeses. Uh, but this is a really good knife to just cut any cheese into little cubes if you're serving them with toothpicks for a little um, party you can get as creative as you what you would like you can cut cheese like that it's a very all-purpose knife and can be used to cut any kind of cheese and even for example the hardest being parmesan it's really good at cutting it as well this one here is called a serving knife uh, all the other three knives before were used to cut things this knife is almost like a serving fork. Um, I call it a fork because it looks like a fork, but it's actually called a serving knife. And the purpose of this knife is actually to either transfer the cheese, uh, let's say from here, I pick the cheese and transfer it here. But also what I can do with this is I can use this as a holder so I can hold the cheese while I'm cutting it. It's especially useful for cheeses that are hard, again like Parmesan. I can insert the thongs like that and then steady the cheese as I'm cutting it, like this. So right now, since the cheese has already been cut for me, I'm just going to use the pronged part to transfer it to the wooden tray. This is the parmesan that I've placed the first. Next, I will be placing um, cheddar cheese. And there is no particular rule that you need to follow when doing that. You can get as creative as you wish to be. Uh, you can place it on top of each other, side by side, as long as it aesthetically is suitable to you. The only reason it's recommended to place an odd number is, again, for aesthetic purposes. There is no superstition uh, about the number of the cheese that you have to place. I would then like to place this soft cheese here. You can then move things around to make sure that you have enough space for everything. I would place the blue cheese right here and then the brie I'll place in the middle because it's the one that has the white top and it's a colorful contrast to everything that's almost yellow here on the wooden uh, tray. So the blue cheese is the one that has the most pungent smell. It's the one that has, um, it's considered the strongest cheese so it would be consumed the last. I have three of each. And then for this last part to cut the brie, I'm going to use another knife. I'll use this one to cut the brie into little pie shapes, so almost like I'm cutting a cake. So I'll use this. so everyone gets just enough of it to share. All right, 
So then I'll use the rest of the space to fill in the gaps with things that can be accompanying the cheese platter. It could be some nuts. You can get as creative as you like, depending on what you personally like or maybe what your guests like. With nuts, you might advise consult your guests first to see if anyone has allergies or not. You can use some grapes. They're always a really nice way to add some color to the cheese plate. I'm gonna change a bit the things around to make sure I have enough space for everything. And then this part, I'm gonna add some celery sticks. You can always add some crackers, especially if you're serving your cheese plate as an appetizer plate. Uh, so if you're hosting a party at home and trying to, you know, offer some champagne before dinner and offering some uh, some appetizers, then you can include crackers. But if you're serving uh, the cheese plate as a dessert instead of a dessert or before the dessert and after the main course, then you wouldn't add any crackers to it. Since I have a little bit of space between the blue cheese and parmesan, I'll add some dried apricots. I love the combination of sweet and salty um, and I think a lot of people like that combination and uh, you can always see some dried fruits with a cheese platter, um, especially if you're serving it instead of a dessert or before the dessert. So you can always add something sweet like dried fruits. Um, the only thing you'll be careful about is the nuts because some people might have allergies towards the nuts and then the rest is something everyone can enjoy. Um, if you look at my cheese platter, you see that I love to create some kind of patterns and I love uh, giving space between the two cheeses and separating it with something that could be um, nipped on. So I'll have apricots in between the blue cheese and the parmesan. I have nuts between the cheddar cheese and soft cheese. I have the the bridge, so to speak, between the celery and the grapes with this brie here. So I like to create a little bit of pattern, but then again, it's not a rule. It's something that you can always personalize, granted that you follow the two important rules, and that is keeping the number odd and including a variety of cheese. Now that we have prepared the cheese board, let's talk about the right way of eating cheese. Let's start with the very first question that's often addressed is when is the cheese platter served or when should it be served? That very much depends on where you are geographically or who you're invited to. Depending on a culture, cheese is served at different times. For example, in my country in Azerbaijan, we serve cheese as an appetizer. So you might expect to see the first thing on the table, cheese, bread, some butter. This is not just for breakfast, but you can expect to see it for lunch and dinner. If you're in France, you'd expect to get a cheese platter either after the main course and before the dessert or instead of the dessert. Sometimes you are offered a cheese platter on in a social gathering that's called apéro, which is uh, equivalent to almost like a, um, a little social gathering prior to the main course. So it doesn't really have an equivalent in English, but this little networking moment before the main course is served, you might expect to get cheese platter then. And then, as I already mentioned, you would expect to get crackers accompanying the cheese platter. But if you're getting uh, the cheese platter instead of a dessert, then you would often see some fruits there or some salad being served with it. Now, the way that we would eat the cheese from the cheese platter is we would start from the mildest taste to the strongest one. The strongest one, if there's a blue cheese on a tray, you know that's the last one to be consumed because the blue cheese has the most powerful flavor and hence it should be eaten last. Usually the lighter the color of the cheese, like goat cheese, they're usually the softest in their taste and flavor. So we start from those so that we don't overwhelm our palate uh, with a stronger sense because then we won't be able to really taste the milder flavors. We start from the softest going up, building up to the most powerful. It might remind you of an afternoon tea ceremony where we start from sandwiches and move up all the way to desserts because we start from something that's milder to something that has a much richer flavor. So the way you would cut the cheese is you would ensure that when you are taken from the tray, you're not cutting off the tip. And the reason you don't cut off the tip, it's considered a huge etiquette faux pas, is because the richest flavor, the most indulgent part, is actually in the tip of the cheese. So when you cut it off and put it to yourself, that means the rest of the guests are not being able to enjoy the cheese as much as you are. It's a bit of self-centered, egotistic approach to it. So when you're cutting cheese, make sure to cut it along length -wise, uh, lengthwise and also ensuring that you don't get rid of the tip. So you cut, ensuring you get the tip 
and the end and the rim, everything in one length. So for example, here I have brie and I'm using this prong knife that is served with a, a cheese board. You would expect to see a couple of knives being served with a cheese board and then you just pick the one, uh, cut it into two and then use this edge part to pick a cheese and transfer it to your own plate and then put the knife back here. I just want to show you the wrong way of cutting the cheese to show you how it would look if you were to get rid of the tip. So imagine you come up, you cut the cheese like this, taking for yourself the side that has just the tip. That means that the person that's about to pick up the rest of the cheese is not going to enjoy the part that is the tip, that is the most powerful part of the cheese. So that was the wrong way of doing, do not repeat this anywhere, not at home or anywhere else. Now that you have transferred the soft cheese onto your plate, you can take a piece of bread. Depending if you have a little bread plate, then you would break the bread on that bread plate. But since I don't have one, I'm going to be breaking the bread also on the plate where the cheese is served. So I will cut, I will break, excuse me, a little piece of bread that will match in the size the proportion of the cheese. So you don't make yourself a sandwich out of it. You just break one bite piece of cheese. Then you break the same equal proportion size of cheese. You put it on your braid. There is no need to spread the, uh, the cheese, even if it's a soft cheese. And then you just leave the knife like this, blades in, and use your fingers to eat this. So, Sometimes you're served a cheese platter with only one knife but so that you don't mix the flavors of the cheese you'd have to take the knife, break a little piece of your own bread, clean the knife with your own bread so that you don't have anything else there remaining, prepare the knife for the other cheese. So in this case um, let's say I'm taking a piece of Let's, I'll put this whole piece actually to my plate, transfer it using the pronged side, place it back in and then I'll use my own fork and knife to cut a piece. The way I can eat it is either with a bread or just alone. I'll cut into small bite piece and then use the fork to eat it. I can also use some crackers if they're served. Again, take a cracker, spit it into a little bite piece, cut a little bit of cheese, again matching proportion to the cracker, place it on my cracker and then use my fingers to eat it. Again, I can also use the bread to eat this. I'll break a little bit of a, of a bread, place it here, cut again a matching proportion of cheese, place it on a bread and eat it like this. This is how you would handle your cheese and your bread and your crackers if you are at the formal reception. But sometimes at informal gatherings you might expect to get a diced cheese like this into cute little cube cubes and you'll get toothpicks with it, either on it or by its side. In that case you'll just pick a little toothpick, insert it into the little cube sized cheese and then eat it like this. The question that's often asked when eating cheese is do I eat the rind or do I not eat the rind and what do I do if I'm not eating it? The right way to answer this question is pretty much all cheeses come with edible rinds unless the rind has gotten bad, you don't like the taste of it, you don't like the how coarse it has become. So usually for cheeses that are older, they have much tougher or rougher rinds and you might not want to eat that. In that case, all you have to do is cut until the point of the rid and then just not consume that part. There's no need to do it on the cheese board, you just transfer the cheese to your own plate and only on your plate you can cut the cheese and remain left the remaining rind part on your plate. So for example, if I'm, this is by the way a serving fork, I'm serving myself some blue cheese, I'll transfer it. So this would be the last cheese I'm going to consume because I'm not going to eat anything else after I have eaten a blue cheese because it has such a pungent taste. So put this here. 
The blue cheese has a very coarse rind. I'm not going to eat it. So I will eat everything up until then. And once I've reached the rind, I'll just reach until this point and not eat that part. When you're serving yourself cheese from the cheese platter, make sure to not have more than three cheese at one time. So here I've served myself brie, some cheddar and some blue cheese. If you're enjoying a cheese platter after the main course, do not reserve yourself some more cheese because this platter is prepared, designed in a way that it could be shared with everyone. So you can only reserve yourself once you've been offered to do so. If this cheese platter is supposed to be passed around to people at the table, we start passing it from the oldest to the youngest, from females to males. And also always remember to never call cheese stinky. It's rude to call cheese stinky. We call it cheese powerful or having a strong scent or flavor, but we never call it stinky. As you can see here, I've been served some white wine that is usually the most common type of wine served with cheese because white wine has a very delicate taste and usually the way you would enjoy the cheese is ma match the power of the cheese, so to speak, the power of the wine. So the more powerful is the cheese, say Parmesan or blue cheese, you'd pair, would pair it with more powerful flavored or scented wines. The safest bet is to go for white wine, but there are some cheese that could be served with red wine as well as even some champagne. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed learning about cheese etiquette. Please do let me know in the comment section below what are some more video suggestions that you have for me and I'll be more than happy to shoot new videos for you. Thank you for watching until the end and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!